Hi there, it's Thomas. And as regular viewers of this channel will know, I am a third year astrophysics student studying at the University of St Andrews in Scotland. But just over three years ago, I made a decision that could have meant a slightly different intro to this video. Instead of saying St Andrews, I could have been saying I was a third year astrophysics student at the University of Glasgow, or Edinburgh, or Dundee. In fact, I could have been saying I was just a physics student at the University of Strathclyde. But I'm not. I was convinced by the School of Physics and Astronomy at the University of St Andrews, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about why that was. How did St Andrews convince me to accept my offer there, and why do I not regret that decision in the slightest? I'll get this out of the way right now. I have always loved St Andrews as a town. My family have been going on holiday there for decades, long before I was born, and I know the town better than some students ever will because I've spent so much time there. When I was looking at universities, I was always drawn there, but other universities really tempted me, especially Glasgow. But in the end, St Andrews was the one that won me over. But St Andrews was the last university I actually visited before my offers came through. I'd already been to open days at Strathclyde, Glasgow and Edinburgh. I didn't actually go to Dundee's open day because I was pretty sure I wanted the option of an integrated master's course. So you do the master's year at the end of your four years BSc and you don't graduate, it's all one degree and if you're Scottish, the Scottish government pays for it. But Dundee offered a bachelor's in astrophysics and I had an extra slot on my application. So I put them in as my fifth UCAS choice. But enough about the other universities, let's talk about the St Andrews Open Day. Now obviously these aren't happening this year because pandemic, so I'll tell you a bit about what mine was like. There were a few central events put on by the university including a tour of the town, a lot of which I was already familiar with, as well as a look at some of the accommodation. I had a look in Macintosh Hall which didn't end up being the one I was assigned, but it was an interesting experience nonetheless. But after lunch we had the department tours, which for me meant going straight to the physics building. The building itself is not much to look at. It's why it's a blurry mess in the background of my channel photo. But inside it's much improved. The lecture theatres were updated fairly recently and they're all modern with new projector systems and whiteboards. The main concourse where the cafe is located was refurbished as well along with most of the tutorial rooms and the labs. People were clearly proud of the school building and you can really feel it when you enter the place. I remember a talk we got from our director of teaching as well as speaking to other students and staff in the school and you just got a sense that people really loved the department and it was just a really friendly place to be. Now that feeling was correct. I'd reckon that most students in St Andrews would argue that one of the best things is the community aspect. Goodness knows we've mourned it enough this year. But I'd argue that physics is the place where I feel it perhaps the most. Now, don't get me wrong, halls of residence and societies are great for community as well, and I love them to bits. But physics is the one place I feel I can always go and really have a chat with anyone. Other students in the department are engaged, and there are areas where people will meet to discuss everything from a tutorial sheet, to what societies they're going to, to what they're doing on Friday night. I mentioned before we have this area that's officially called the main concourse, Everyone just calls it the Physics Cafe. It's a fairly relaxed area where you can get a lot of work done if you want, but also would have a bit of a chat with people between lectures and tutorials. I really miss just being able to sit between lectures and talk to my friends, because it's a really nice place to do that. The school is also linked with several societies, PhysSoc, Physics Society, AstroSoc, the Astronomical Society, and EASY, the Engineering and Aerospace Society. These societies offer stuff beyond what the school does, but they do it with the school's support. We've put on joint events, and yeah, I really miss those events, especially the AstroSoc Observing Nights, although a lot of that is to do with the hot chocolate because, yeah, if you remember, you got unlimited hot chocolate and it's a really nice night. They do a talk, you get to do some observing, and you get to have a chat with people. But students aren't the only thing that make the physics department's atmosphere great. The staff are also amazing. One of the things that really surprises some of my friends from other schools and other universities is that in physics at St Andrews, 
we're all on a first name basis. I can walk down the corridor in the physics building in normal times and just say hi Bruce to our director of teaching because it's normal. The staff are all really passionate. It's clear that they love physics and they get a real kick out of teaching, especially when people are interested in the topic. And that gets even more exciting once you get to honours years. And I think there's one real massive reason for that. The School of Physics and Astronomy at St Andrews evolves. The courses aren't static. And when I say that they're not static, what I mean is that the degree now is not the same as the degree five years ago, or 10 years ago, or 20 years ago. Now some things will be pretty similar. The course content for a first and second year, largely unchanged because that is some pretty core basic physics everyone needs to know. But honours modules, especially the 4000 and 5000 level modules, normally taken in fourth and fifth year, but sometimes in junior honours, like extra galactic astronomy, those modules are on the cutting edge to the point that in some of my extragalactic astronomy modules, there were slides that had lines on them that just said, here are a few popular hypotheses right now. This is active research. The courses evolve as new research is published, meaning that as students, although we are still just students, we're learning things as they happen. It's current and it's exciting. Just think about gravitational waves. A few years ago, they were being taught as a theoretical, something we could hypothetically observe. Now they're taught as something we have observed and we can observe. They're not just hypothetical anymore. But research isn't the only thing that causes change in physics at St Andrews. The School of Physics and Astronomy were the first in St Andrews to have what we call a student staff council. This is a meeting that happens a few times a year where the school president and the class reps, who are all elected by their peers, sit down with members of staff from the school and have a discussion. It's an open forum to ask questions, to debate issues, and to explain what we feel we'd like from the course and from the staff to explain their point of view and to try and cause real change in the degree. Now all schools have them, and I can't speak for the effectiveness of them in other schools, but the one we have in physics makes a difference. The physics SSC has pushed for Fewer 100% exam modules, especially in honours level, and they've made progress replacing them with coursework or class tests. They've brought forward issues surrounding module content and students not feeling that they're prepared enough for life after university. This has led to adding more coding to the degree and they take into account our views on what languages these modules should be taught in. And yes, I am a proponent that getting rid of Mathematica is a really good idea shock horror, I'm sure, for regular viewers. We were the first school to bring in disability reps, whose entire job is to advocate for improving the accessibility and inclusivity of the degrees for everyone, regardless of any increased difficulties you might face. A good example of this would be asking lecturers who provide pages and pages and pages of notes to also supply them in a dyslexic-friendly font. But there will of course be other things that are asked for that I'm just less aware of. But almost everything I've mentioned up to now is not really anything I was aware of when I came in. Because what we were told a bit about was sub-honours. Now I'm not going to go straight in and talk about everything you do in a sub-honours degree. I've done a video on that already, go have a look in the top right hand corner. Ignoring course content, I found that sub-honours astrophysics and by extension physics was a really good time. Part of that can be put down to how the Scottish university system is set up. In a lot of courses, especially in first year and a bit in second, you get some additional choice. You don't come in and do just physics. I don't know what it's like at other universities. Some may fill all of the available time with physics and astrophysics, but I had two slots in my first year to fill with any module I wanted, as long as it didn't clash. Personally, I chose to do a pure and applied maths module and a statistics module because I wasn't as confident in my maths ability as I felt I needed to be. And in hindsight, I'm really glad I chose to do these modules. But I know people who did modules in chemistry, biology, economics, astrobiology, and music, as well as so many others that I'm forgetting about. The fact that choosing to do physics at university at St Andrews doesn't lock you into doing just physics and maths modules in first year is something I really liked, and it gives you a bit more sense of what's out there. I know people that shifted degrees because they could do 
other things and found that they loved them more. I'm really glad it was set up this way because I'd never studied astrophysics before I came to St Andrews. I didn't know if I'd like it. I didn't know if I'd like physics at university level. Now as it happens, I love it. But I didn't know that going in. I also find that the course is pretty balanced. I'm sure no two people watching this video will like working in the same way. My favourite ways of studying are probably different from yours. That's just a fact of life. Some people find it far more effective to trawl through pages and pages and pages of textbooks or written notes, devouring pages of knowledge. Some prefer to sit and listen to an online lecture. Some prefer to do tutorial questions. I'm kind of a combination of the lot of them. Now, I probably could go on and on and on for hours about the different ways that people like to study. In fact, I may well do so at some point. The bottom line is this. The way that I find easiest to study is very probably not the same as the way you like to study. Case in point, I hate mind maps. But St Andrews allows for this flexibility in learning. The course is split up into different parts. In most modules you'll have lectures, tutorials, perhaps labs, as well as independent work. And they're different environments to learn in. They suit different people better. Personally, I wasn't a huge fan of a lot of the practical lab work. It's not something I find that interesting to do. And trying to understand, for example, magnetic fields, I prefer to look at it from a sort of theoretical look at the vectors of magnetic fields point of view, rather than measuring things and trying to work it out that way. But some people hate trying to work out the vectors and love doing it practically. I also find that the balance of different parts of the degree is pretty good. We're not left in the labs three, four, five days a week in sub honours, although some chemistry students are. But of course that's a far more lab based degree. We're also not left with days on days on days on days of lectures like a lot of medical students. But at the same time we don't have two lectures in a week like a lot of art students. It's more like two or three a day, but it's manageable. My point is this. The St Andrews degree is not set up to try and fit squares into round holes. They're not trying to pump out a class of identical physicists every year. They appreciate that people do learn differently, and the degree is set up to allow people who learn differently to succeed as well as each other. So those are the reasons that I love physics at St Andrews. I did not know all of them going in, and I wouldn't expect anyone to. But now that I know these things, I don't regret my choice at all. If you have any questions about physics at St Andrews or St Andrews University in general, I would encourage you to drop them in the comments below. I'm planning to do a Q&A within the next week to talk about physics in general, physics at St Andrews, and St Andrews in general. If you're coming to this after that video is up, by all means go have a look at it, and if you have any questions drop them in the comments on this video, on that video, it's entirely possible I might do more Q&As if I get enough different questions. And if you're looking for something else to watch, then maybe check out the video I mentioned earlier about the, what you do in the sub honours years of a physics degree. In the meantime though, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!